guys, welcome to our channel. Today I wanted to talk about fusion power and fusion generators in particular. You might have heard in recent news about British government planning to invest around 200 million pounds into fusion energy. It's a part of their larger renewable energy program and of course they aim to bring a lot of renewable energy to UK uh, along with fusion energy, which is quite prospective. Aside of that, there is a larger, more fascinating project called ITER and it's situated in the south of France. The most interesting part of it is that it's a huge international collaboration between largest governments and it has a lot of resources, a lot of finances, a lot of effort invested in it and it will fire up first uh, full-scale reactions in as soon as 2033 and 35, around those dates. And before that, it will have the test reactions in around 2025 when uh, it will finish their current construction phase and will be able to test the reactor properly. They plan to bring uh, 10 times gain of energy compared to the input and uh, by the time it gets to the final phase, it should be really cost efficient and it should produce a lot of energy. Aside of that, there are several more interesting small-scale projects that promise us to bring fusion energy in as soon as 2024-25. Some of those smaller generators will be small enough to be fitted in ships, and by that I mean around the size of Nimitz aircraft carriers, and as well as planes, giving them unlimited flight capability and unlimited durability, and spaceships which is probably the most fascinating part of it. And by that, we'll be able to reduce the travel time to Mars from three, six months, which is an average estimate right now, to just one month. And it's a considerable improvement, particularly if we plan to conduct regular space traveling missions. Let's start with a short overview of what fusion power actually is. The process involves the fusion of two hydrogen atoms, hence the name fusion. Through this, a significant amount of energy is released. This amount of energy is greater than what was put in to create the reaction. And that's the main reason uh, for scientific interest and why it gets a lot of backing from both governments and corporate sector. This makes fusion power plants more efficient and less energy demanding than most power plants that exist today, at least if they're developed to their proper capacity. In order to recreate this reaction, the temperature of sound score has to be reached and surpassed, with resulting plasma getting contained by powerful magnets, so we get a properly contained reaction. This creates a collision of hydrogen nuclei, and through that a large amount of energy is released. When the reaction is conducted as intended, and on a large enough scale, it should bring a net energy gain. That's pretty much what ITER is striving for right now. And that's the goal of current developments in fusion in general. First reactor I wanted to talk about is a spark reactor. It's developed by MIT Plasma. It is a compact high field net fusion energy experiment. It is predicted to produce around 50 to 100 megawatt of fusion power, becoming a first ever demonstration of net energy gain, at least in theory. This is about the same output as a big solar power plant. This will be achieved by using high-field, high-temperature superconducting magnets, known as HTS. They will make the currently widely used tokamak model more effective and efficient, allowing it to achieve a much higher magnetic field. Currently, they are in research and development phase, even though they kind of have an early working prototypes, and they're teamed up with Commonwealth Fusion Systems, which is a British research company. Their final design will have around 1.65 meter major outer radius and 1.5 meter minor small radius so you can see it's quite smaller than conventional large reactors like ITER or the ones that's being developed by China and it should have a 12 tesla magnetic field their design will give a magnetic bottle effect uh, with this magnetic field producing a very strong magnetic bottle capability, effectively insulating the plasma and allowing it to reach fusion conditions. The effect lowers the power requirement to heat up the plasma, making it hotter and denser. That in turn allows uh, the device 
um, smaller in comparison it will produce a fifth of the power output of ether but it will be 1 65th of the volume of ether so you can see it's much smaller and more energy efficient the future plans uh, for it are to build 200 megawatt facility which is more on par with current commercial power plants another reactor is Lockheed Martin's concept and it also uses the magnetic bottle effect and it can sustain temperatures up to 100 million degrees that can be released in a controlled fashion this will produce electricity similarly to well-known method of transferring the heat uh, to turn the turbines which is commonly used in nuclear power plants this will be achieved by replacing the combustion chambers with simple heat exchangers. In addition to producing electricity, such turbines can be used to generate propulsive power. This will enable them to be used in planes, bringing a limited range and endurance to them, and ships, and by that I mean like large naval Nimitz-class ships, and they will be effectively replacing the current nuclear reactors. In addition to all of that, it can be effectively used even on spaceships, so will not only provide a huge energy source for any kind of spaceship, whether it's traveling to moon, to Mars, or beyond that, but if we take the Mars trip, for example, it will shorten it from three to six months, which is current estimate, to just one month. And it's extremely important for regular space trips, as I mentioned before. Their newest experimental reactor is called T5, and they're currently constructing and testing it. Their designated company, Skunk Works, has already built four different designs by now. And this one is their fifth iteration, so it's a uh, fifth concept and they already have considerable practical experience in fusion reactors by now. Its main purpose is to test how well it can handle the heat and pressure from highly energized plasma inside. It should go online towards the end of this year. This reactor will be able to avoid a lot of issues with plasma confinement and will be able to handle more plasma pressure due to the novelty approach it employs. Thus, instead of constraining the plasma within the tubular rings, which is the tokamak reaction pretty much, a series of superconducting coils will generate a new magnetic field geometry in which plasma will be held within the broader confines of the entire chamber. Superconducting within the coils will generate a magnetic field around the outer border of the chamber. If tokamak can be compared to a bike tire expanding into air, this design resembles more of a tube expanding into an even stronger wall. With a self-tuning feedback mechanism, pushing the plasma back stronger the farther it expands. Their proposed design will be able to power around 80,000 homes, producing enough electricity to constantly sustain them. And according to the patented documents, it should definitely reach a small enough scale to power an aircraft. Another interesting generator design is being created by General Fusion. It uses a pulse-powered system similar to a diesel engine and has several large investors, including Jeff Bezos and Canadian company called Senovus Energy. Their main goal right now is to create a 70% scale pilot plant that will have 500 2 to 3 meters pistons conducting the actual fusion reaction. Next company that is worth mentioning is Tai Technologies. They are currently working on a C2W Norman machine, an upgrade from the previous C2U model that has managed to reach 20 million degrees Celsius. This is greater than the temperature of Sun's core. They are conducting a hydrogen boron fusion reaction that is cleaner than the deuterium tritium 1, which is commonly used in fusion, and they aim to reach 3 billion degrees eventually. The reaction involves shooting smoke rings of high energy plasma at each other within a magnetic confinement chamber with the neutral beams directed into the chamber and shooting through them. In addition, they are using a sophisticated machine learning software which is powered by Google and US Department of Energy. This allows them to perform 60 beam shots per day and gather 10 gigabytes of data per single shot. And the process of analyzing this data takes only 3 to 4 seconds. 
The most fascinating part about it is that they plan commercialization as soon as 2023, after the next machine Copernicus will be constructed and properly tested. That's a machine that they should bring net energy gain, with their end goal being a sizable power plant between 350 megawatts and 400 megawatts. This is around the same as an output of a single thermal power plant unit, and obviously it is far cleaner than coal and gas fueled reactions that such thermal power plants are using. The last fusion energy project that I will be talking about is Helion Energy. They have already raised $30 million over the past three years, and this should be more than enough for their debut 50 megawatt break-even prototype. They are currently using a fifth generation prototype called Venti. They are in the process of designing a sixth generation machine called Trenta, which should finish its construction in 2021. After this is done, they will go on to construct a seventh generation machine that should be finished somewhere near 2024. They want to achieve commercial magneto inertial fusion, combining the stability of a steady magnetic fusion and the heating of a pulsed inertial fusion. This will allow them to make it smaller and cheaper than the current large scale project. The two reactions will magnetically accelerate plasma and then compress it once per second. Their fusion engine will use helium along with their deuterium fuel from seawater that will reach more than 100 million degrees. The technology that they are testing and planning to use for commercial machines was already proven and tested in a series of prototypes that are generating deuterium deuterium fusion, which is helium-3 fuel basically. To sum it up, overall we can expect at least one of those projects, probably more, to bring commercially viable fusion in around 2025. And this is a bit optimistic, but if we look at it kind of pessimistically, then we can expect it in 5 to 10 years, but the projects have humongous potential of making it viable and making it commercially viable especially. All of this will be a great contribution to sustainable energy and our efforts to produce cleaner and more sustainable energy future and it will even make electricity cheaper over time and more broadly available as it will be easier to ship to developing countries or places where large solar power plants or uh, wind farms are hard to place or operate. Another interesting thing about Helium-3 is that it can be found in abundance on the moon. And tune in to our next video where we will discuss uh, colonization of moon, settlements on the moon and all the minerals and resources that can be found in there to benefit humanity in general as well as the estimates of how soon can we get to the moon and what kind of technologies we already possess. Thank you for watching the video, you can find my full article on the subject by following in the link in the description below. Please give us a like and subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you and have a great day!